Speed is called many things, a disease, a drug, and even a cure. As the only man to have gone faster than the speed of sound on land, world land speed record holder, Wing Commander Andy Green of the British Royal Air Force is coming to India and he will be talking about going supersonic and beyond. It was 17 years ago today that we set the final supersonic world land speed record in Thrust SSC and I can still remember every single detail like it was last week. We got Thrust SSC starting from the southern end of the desert to the other end of its 14 mile track in just about three minutes, peaking for the first time in history, supersonic through the measured mile at over 760 miles an hour. We then had 45 minutes to turn the car around. There were all sorts of problems with parachutes and fuel systems and the time was ticking away. But 52 minutes later, I'm in the car, engine's running, ready to go, and I get the clearance to go. Because the northern end of the desert's slightly harder, we come back six miles an hour faster, 766 miles an hour. Average, 763. 1.5% faster than the speed of sound. A new world record, the first supersonic record. But getting the design and engineering right was an intensely precise activity. The supersonic record is exactly 17 years old. Um, it's the longest standing record in history, and that is an indication of just how difficult it is to manage that problem. Thrust running along the, uh, the desert, had it been one degree too much nose down, it would have generated 10 tons of download and crushed the car. One degree too much nose up, would have generated 10 tons of lift, would have caused the car to come spectacularly and violently off the surface, at which point the chassis would have collapsed, the bodywork would have torn off, the engines would have come out through the bottom of the car. Strapped in the middle of all of that, I would lose all further interest in the afternoon proceedings. The precision required, we had to develop new technology. What was then a new science called computational fluid dynamics, the computer modeling, in-ground effect of supersonic airflow had never been done before. We then had to take this computer model, which is only as good as a model, 20 years ago computers were quite basic, so we had to find out where the computers didn't model properly and make the adjustments to make the car right. No one in the last 17 years has managed to achieve that. Andy hopes that the world land speed record will be smashed by this the new 1,000 mile per hour Bloodhound supersonic car. Project Bloodhound was conceived to push the technology back to the limits of modern technology, to literally push back the boundaries of physics and do something that not only no one had done before, that's the definition of a land speed record. In airspeed terms, the limit at ground level is about Mach 1.4. Now, that doesn't actually mean very much to most people, speed of sound, 750 miles an hour times 1.4, actually it equals just over 1,000 miles an hour. So we very rapidly thought, forget 1.4, we'll call it 1,000 miles an hour, 1,600 kilometers per hour. That is our target. It wasn't chosen randomly, it's chosen because wheels rotating at 10,000 revolutions a minute are pulling 50,000 times the force of gravity outwards. That's the limit of modern aluminium uh, forging technologies. The jet engine is going to go 100 miles an hour faster than it was designed to go because 1,600 kilometers an hour at ground level is faster than any jet fighter has been in history. So the jet is at its absolute limit beyond its design margins. The structural loads on the vehicle, 12 tons per square meter of aerodynamic load, all of these things, how fast we accelerate and how fast we slow down, we need a 20 kilometer track to do that the best quality track in the world turns out to be exactly 20 kilometers long. Even if we wanted to go faster, I'm not sure we could. That 1,000 mile an hour figure wasn't chosen by accident. A whole lot of things zoomed in on that. That is Bloodhound's aim, and it's to share that adventure with the whole world. India is also playing its part in helping the Bloodhound SSE zoom towards its target. We're very lucky we've had some fantastic support from India. It'll come as no surprise to anybody that uh, that support has all been within the Tata group. We've used Tata steel for constructing elements of the car and I'm thrilled to say we've got some major support from one of the Tata group companies who we are just about to announce that. But it's a really, really exciting deal and it's something that uh, as, as a key deal, they will, this, you know, one of the Tata group companies is going to be right at the heart of Bloodhound delivering over the next two years part of our engineering adventure. So we owe a lot to Indian companies. We're very, very grateful for that support. 
Bloodhound SSC project might seem all about breaking a record, but it has a bigger and more important motive. The world of the future is going to be high technology, low carbon, energy efficient. It's going to be better, cleaner, safer, richer and more colourful and more exciting to live in. If we solve all of the technical problems that will get us there. The people who are going to solve those problems, who are going to build that world, who are going to live and work in that high technology world of tomorrow, are at school right now. And they need inspiring about science and technology. So Bloodhound, the long-term strategic aim is to actually bring that technology and science to life and make it fun for them. And the Institution of Engineering and Technology has invited Andy to India to share his passion and sparked the interest for engineering amongst students here. Absolutely thrilled that I've got a chance to present Bloodhound thanks to the Institute of Engineering Technology in India. But actually, um, it is very much about getting individuals and companies involved. So, this is an engineering adventure for the whole world. You too can join in the excitement by attending the Lord Austin Lecture in Chennai or Bengaluru. Find out more on the site mentioned below. If not, we'll be sure to catch up with Andy and we'll tell you all about the adventure that looks set to inspire another generation of engineers and dreamers.